So Akira Yagashi is once again a world champion, and now we're world champion in three different weight classes. Um, 105, 112, and now 108. He he split the difference by defeating Javier Mendoza the other day on uh, December 29th for one of these New Year's cards in Japan. Um, it's funny because uh, the year before he actually lost um, in his original title shot at a 108 pound belt. That one was for the vacant WBC at the time when he was fighting Pedro Guevara of Mexico. Uh, Guevara. Yeah, he did a he did a pretty good job against Gravada, but Gravada was a little bit too tough, and um, he overcame him. And uh, to be honest, I'd say that it there's a good chance that it probably was just too quick of a turnaround after getting the nine round beatdown from Roman Gonzalez just a few months earlier to be fighting another elite level fighter in Gravada. But Yagashi is not exactly one to shy away from a challenge. He's fought some very serious fighters in in the past. His uh, very first loss was against uh, a world champion at 105, Eagle Kiowa, aka Eagle Dunjelafan. But um, and then his uh, he had a loss a couple years later to Kazuto Yoka. He was one of the current 112 pound titleists. Uh, more on him in a little while. Um, Yoka, of course, you know is a is a world champion at 112, so he plays into a potential future opponent for Roman Gonzalez. And um, Akira Yagashi, incidentally, I think may play into being a few sure opponent either for Naya Inoue or Juan Francisco Estrada because apparently Yagashi now is talking about possibly going, making another jump um, up to this time up to 115, jumping over 112 and fighting against uh, Kohei Kono as long as Kono still um, has his title uh, by the time he gets to him. Kono is the WBA super flyweight champion at the moment. And should Yegashi move up there and beat him, he he would not only become a four-weight champion, but he would definitely play into potential prospects at a big money fight against either Chocolatito, um, if Gonzalez moves up and you know, that'd be the type of fight that they could, you know, play into a rematch and, you know, it'd be four four weight champion versus potential four weight champion um or Estrada or uh Naya Inoue and in in with him versus Inoue it would be you know two weight champion versus four weight champion and would also be Inoue fighting a comparison fight I guess in a way um you know compare how Inoue does against Yagashi to how Gonzalez had done previously so a lot of props to Yagashi. He managed to overcome Javier Mendoza. Um, I didn't even really talk about the fight as much, but basically Yagashi he fights a little bit like a um a like a maybe a blend between a George Groves and a Yoriokas Gamboa. He's real in and out. He kind of he'll sometimes he'll stalk you, sometimes he'll move around you, and he he pretty much launches attacks pretty much with his hands at his waist, and he'll he'll just shoot a lot of power shots. Um, he he loves. Throwing big right hands, big left hooks, left uppercuts, right uppercuts from all angles. So he's a real hard to predict guy, but he can be caught coming in, which is pretty much how he's been beaten in the past. But Mendoza just seemed to be a little bit too stationary. Like he was a he's a, Mendoza's a guy that likes to kind of plant his feet and kind of outbox you on the inside. But Yagashi being in and out so much, he really wasn't able to give Mendoza that chance to really plant and use his timing and his uh his skill on the inside in order to kind of parry and 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 outbox him the way he's done some other fighters so Yagashi pretty much just overwhelmed him just with all the variety of angles and the the, the variety of punches that he was hitting him with and it's kind of a shame because um I, I thought that Mendoza should he have won this fight uh Eric Morales being his manager. I, I don't know if he's his manager or his promoter, but he has some major stake in him. Um, I, I thought he probably would have been able to bring him to light to America a bit more easily, you know, bring more, some more shine down to the lower weight classes, especially um, if he would have been able to fight Moises Fuentes because Moises Fuentes, who is a former champion at 105 and 108, is uh, managed by Marco Antonio Barrera. And, of course, you know, it's like... That you could play up that their rivalry going into them now being behind the scenes as opposed to being the fighters in there, 
But in any case, I mean, Yagashi spoiled those plans for now. And Yagashi is, I mean, he looks he looked rejuvenated. He looked like a, um, a renewed fighter. And the fact that he's saying that he wants to move all the way up to 115 now, try to win a fourth weight class title. I mean, he's he's challenging himself. He's trying to fight uh, high-level guys. I mean, of course, if he were to fight Kono, he'd be taking on the guy that's assumed to be the weakest champion at 115 currently out of um, Kono, Carlos Cuadras, Miguel Arroyo, and uh, Naya Inoue. But... I think that Yagashi's um, skill and his his willingness to fight tough fights is what really what makes him exciting, along with what he shows in the ring and the the way he fights. So a lot of props to Yagashi. Hopefully he continues to challenge himself like that, or maybe he even moves up to 112 and we get that rematch between him and Kazuto Yoka that a lot of people were clamoring for, as the two of them were kind of both moving up from 105 at the same time. So, either way, I'll be anxious to see how Yagashi does. And there's going to be a link to um, Yagashi versus Mendoza in the comment section to this video. Or in the description, rather. Peace.